last season on Dark Dunedin. Matt, is Stella coming? Doesn't want to. Who is this? Stella. Who? Matthew's girlfriend. Oh, Stella. Yes, Richard, Stella. Well, what's wrong with her? Nothing. She just doesn't want to come. Why not? We like Stella. Rich, leave it. Have we done something to upset your girlfriend? Richard! Police are seeking information relating to the brutal assault of a young woman in Dunedin. She was discovered by two boys playing cricket at Prospect Park at the northern end of the town belt. Police would like to speak to anyone who witnessed suspicious behaviour in the area between 10pm last night and 6am this morning. There's a man at my window. A man in my garden at my window. Dark Dunedin Season 2, Episode 1. Night Music. Ditto, bleach, tissues, tish, tish, tissues, there you are, in your little boxes, boxes, we're packed into boxes when we die. Merlot, Cab Sav, Pinot... Uh, excuse me, yes, there's a South Australian Shiraz in your flyer that's on special. Uh, with a wagon wheel on the label. Oh, oh, sorry. I thought you worked here. Your jersey looks... Never mind. Oh, heavy. Now, cheese and crackers. Excuse me. Crackers. Miss. The nutty ones with the little seeds. Miss, your nose is bleeding. My what? Nose, it's bleeding. Oh? Down your... 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 Sh- your sh- oh, 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 oh. I've got tissues. Here. Oh, God. What? There's a bird in your basket. Bird? There's a dead bird in your shopping basket. You don't see me, but I see you. I am Louise Hepburn, an invisible woman in the Edinburgh of the South. You shun the watchers until you need to break open our memory banks. This is a story about my Dunedin, Ortipoti, the place of the steep points at the bottom of the world. Someone else would tell the story differently, but this is my story. Hell breathes as heaven looks on. Not you. Miss Hepburn. Don't you have a home to be at? Night shift. And I could ask you the same thing. Why are you shopping at 10pm? It's not a crime. And I'm less likely to be recognised at this hour. The sunglasses might be giving your game away. Someone wearing navy nylon and crimpoline shouldn't be giving out style advice. Nylon's good for washing off blood. What happened to your nose? Don't know. No? People sometimes get bleeding noses. And the bird? There's a special providence in the fall of a sparrow. Right. Do you want to explain that providence to me? They fly into the mall, then they can't get out and they die. I picked it up meaning to dispose of it, but I forgot. Right. Well, the supermarket has to do some paperwork and you'll need to hang around and sign that you... Because you walked around their store with a dead bird and there's health and safety... I handed it over. Speaking of health and safety, are you planning on throwing a party? It's the end of Lent. Don't drink it all at once. I like to have a choice. To be able to make choices. And if you don't need to be here while I sign whatever it is they have me sign, then I choose that you go. All right. Take care of yourself, Miss Hepburn. Oh, I try. But I can't help what others do. When it's dark, I can be invisible in a small town. If anyone is coming for me, they won't find me. A middle-aged bag lady lugging along on her own. 
However, of late, I feel more keenly the brush and whisper of Makutu. <laughs> Darkness misleads as it illuminates. It forces you to squint, focus, and see things in close-up. Hot prowlers patrolling at night. Fish-eyed desire on high alert, drawn like moths tapping at unmet curtains. At night, the darkness inks up the missing, absent, and detained. My youngest nephew, Toby, is being held at the Youth Justice Centre on the outskirts of Christchurch, awaiting trial for assault. His brother, Matthew, opted for a Canterbury boarding school to be close to his sibling and escape the stain of shame here. Their father, Richard, has retreated to the family crib near Pyro at the source of the Taieri River, also known as the Styx. Abhorred sticks, seething and spilling the flood of deadly hate, black and deep, whose waves of torrent fire inflame with rage. No, no, no. Did you fall? Don't move me. I'm doing my sisely. Your what? Sisely berry. Oh, ho. It's voice work. Oh, why do you have to do it on the floor? For diaphragmatic relaxation. Sean. Sean, 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 Sean. Fenella has come home. Technically to her home. After the sudden events of last summer, she decided that assisted living was premature. Being here will do us both good, in her opinion. Not mine. Me, 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 What's brought this on? Yesterday, I had an appointment at the hairdressers. Uh-huh. And while I was waiting for my hair to set, I read a magazine. Which one? The sort we don't leave lying around here. Oh, in it, there was an article about an older woman who How has old? Elderly-ish, but sprightly. Like you? <laughs> yes. And this woman has found herself an acting agent in the United States. Apparently, there's a new trend for the aged, experienced woman. And you're all for trends and experiences. <laughs> I'm all for opportunity and a new lease on life. Men sana incorpore sano. Thinking of heading over for pilot season? Why not? <laughs> Why not? Seriously. What does that woman have that I don't? It just seems... It seems a bit... A bit what? And after these past months? It'll die out. Not in this town. We both need to get out. Both of us. To L.A. We'll go after breakfast, shall we? Wouldn't you rather be sketching portraits at Venice Beach than fielding anonymous phone calls in the night? Spending your days in hiding? Indebted for the rest of your scrutinised life? Wouldn't you? There's what you own and what you can control. What you can control by what you own. Fenella, you're right. I'm going out. I'll be up tonight. Don't wait up. I'm playing a role from my past. When I used to crawl the galleries with the art crowd, before I became a solo commercial enterprise. Cartoons. When Friday night openings were a regular event with Gavin, my once lifelong loyal friend. He'd laugh at how much this place has changed. How the scene has changed, but also a version of the same. (laughs) Everyone's a pretender. Some illicitly bolstered to help the pretense. Pouting and posing. 
I'm not sure I recognize anyone. Anyone? That woman. She was... She is. She, she knew my dad. She, she used to come to our house. She, she was at the funeral, surely. She... No, no. If she sees me, she doesn't recognize me. Or she's pretending not to. At least there's wine. Cheers. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us on our first opening for someone I'm sure you'll all agree is a remarkable new talent. Remarkable might be pushing it. As the daughter of Sandra Dennis and the granddaughter of Thorsten Mayer, Stacey Dennis has a remarkable pedigree, and yet she's an exciting and talented artist in her own right, with her own vision and style. We're so very proud to be representing Stacey and supporting what is bound to be a remarkable career. Remarkable. You think? Uh, oh, oh, oops. Talking to myself. You buying or browsing? I'm here for the plonk. Plonk? Oh, God. God, you work here. No! Never been here before. New in town. Sure am. Good. Great. Is it? Oh, yeah. Do you like living here? Here. Dunedin? I like the local wines. What about the art? Depends on your tastes. Or if you're after a good investment. The way that woman talked about the artist just now, pedigree, it sounded like dog breeding. Mm, well, artists are bitches. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from New York. This is my old... How do you get from Manhattan to here? Research. I'm an architectural archaeologist. Like uh, uh, digging and under and around old buildings. Specifically, 19th century. Then you've come to the right place. Before someone knocks or burns any more of them down. People are crazy. Crazy. <gasps> Cheers. Cheers. Where did you get that ring? This one. Sorry to pry. Oh, no, I'm glad someone noticed it. It might not look like much, but this is one of my true treasures. My mother had a coral cameo ring just like that. This was my mother's. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, maybe they were sisters in another life. Maybe. Does your mother still have hers? She's uh, been dead 30 years. I'm sorry. It was a lifetime ago. Still... It's your mother. And yours? Two years. Sorry. Thank you. Mum's ring must be at my brother's house. What was our family home? He still lives in the family home? His wife does. Oh? It's complicated. Mm, family's right. You don't want to know. Uh, anyway, uh, Mum wore her ring for a few months when I was young, but then she stashed it in her jewellery box and never saw it again. I like that you wear your mother's. She actually got it here. Here? In Dunedin? She came on a study exchange in the 70s. For how long? About six months. It was meant to be a year, but then something came up and she had to go home. Dunedin in the 70s would have been more like Ohio in the 50s. <laughs> she loved it. Always meant to come back. Told me about the friends she made and doing theatre with them. Theatre? Where? The Globe? The Octagon. Octagon? Somewhere called a cinema club? Mm, I don't know of any cinema club in the Octagon. Are you sure that was it? Um, there was a fountain across the street that played music. That? That was definitely there. Someone will know. Uh, my parents did theatre back then and there's bound to be something in their papers or, or, or albums. Actually, I know who will know. Who? My aunt. Your aunt? Tanella. I'll ask her. Imagine if your Aunt Fenella remembered my mom. An American actress in this town in the 70s won't have passed her by. You'd think? I'm going to help you find out. That would mean so much. I like a mystery challenge. People told me that Kiwis are kind. This is remarkable. And like that, I'm doing something remarkable. I've got a mission again. I can help someone and be a little less invisible and on my own. 
And when I have a mission, I have wings. Dark Dunedin is a production of Prospect Park, New Zealand, based in Otipoti, the Edinburgh of the South. All episodes are written and directed by Emily Duncan, produced by H.J. Kilkelly, and recorded at Otago Access Radio. Dominic Angelo Lololi is the technician, and original music is by Marama Grant. Original artwork by Jess Newton. The actors in this episode are Julie Edwards as Louise Hepburn, Beth White as the supermarket manager, Mark Nielsen as Sergeant Thompson, Terry McTavish as Fenella, Harriet Moyer as the art gallery owner, and Kelly Hocking as Regan. Dark Dunedin was produced with support from Creative New Zealand, Dunedin City Council, Archive Birds New Zealand, and Dunedin UNESCO City of Literature. Thank you.